Welcome, Beloveds, to a different kind of Christmas story, a metaphysical interpretation of the birth of Jesus. Why is it important to interpret the birth of Jesus metaphysically? Because there's a deeper meaning around the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus story, who are the players in this play? What does it mean to us? And what is the hidden messages of all those different people? First, let me tell you a little bit about the scripture. The Bible is our story. It's the story of our spiritual growth as spiritual beings having a human experience. It's the story of how we move from old consciousness to new consciousness. It's a rich book full of tips, techniques, advice on how we can fully express ourselves as the divine beings that we are. The Bible is our story. The Old Testament is old consciousness. It's the idea that God is outside of us and that God rewards and punishes us based on our behavior. Now, it is true that God is outside of us, but God is also within us. The New Testament is new consciousness. It's knowing that God is within us and around us, that God is love, and that God does not and will never punish us. We will begin with the inn. The inn represents our intellect. Many times we let our mind tell us there's no room for our spiritual side or there's no room to learn about spirituality. So instead, the baby was born in a cave or a barn in the manger. The manger represents our heart, our feeling nature. The Christ can still be born no matter the conditions of your emotional nature. This is what the manger represents. In the Bible, metaphysically, the masculine represents the intellectual part of our nature. So Joseph, the human father of Jesus, represents our thinking ability. The right state of mind is essential to the growth of a new spiritual awareness in us. The feminine represents the emotional part of our nature, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, represents the very highest emotional experience that human beings can have, pure intuition. And this is how the Christ Spirit comes to us, through intuition. It was through Mary that Jesus was born, through the virgin awareness of pure intuition. The perfect Christ idea of our own spiritual identity is inspired. A pure, a pure heart always magnifies the Spirit of God in us. Angels represent messages from God, divine inspiration and guidance that brings good news of great joy. In the Bible, a star always represents the possibility of our own Christhood. To develop this, to be able to see that star, we need to go apart a while and experience the communion in the silence of the secret place of the Most High. In other words, meditation. To be able to see that star and follow it will bring forth the beautiful spiritual qualities of our true nature. The shepherds and sheep from the peaceful Judean countryside symbolize to us the inner scene of our intellectual and emotional processes.
we can use our minds to gently guide and take care of our little thoughts and chase after the black sheep, to transmute all things in us so they truly follow the Christ. In other words, we have all kinds of negative thoughts, and those are the, the negative thoughts are what we want to transmute into more positive thoughts. Herod is also a part of our intellect, a very important part. He's the puppet king, our ego. And if you remember, Herod sent out a decree to kill all the male children. Our ego is also threatened by the birth of something that dissolves our fear, so threatened that it tries to kill out the idea. The only thing that ever really keeps us from growing is our own ego. This is what we need to get out of the way. Then we know that three wise men came from the east. Why didn't they come from the north or the south or the west? East symbolically means toward the rising sun in the direction of the source, the spiritual realm of consciousness. Gold, representing material possessions, which are mediums through which we work out the divine plan of our life, which means to dedicate everything to God. Frankincense is a symbol of prayer that we send upward toward our aspirations. And myrrh, a seemingly strange gift of embalming ointment, which represents letting go of that which no is no longer needed in order to make room for the Christ to be born in us. So, given all this information and all this symbolism, what does the Christmas story have to do with us? Let the Christ in you be born. Metaphysically, what we celebrate each Christmas is the birth of Christ awareness. What Jesus brought to us was a spark of new light new possibility, light that shines through the darkness of human confusion and illuminates the spiritual truth of who we are. And it doesn't just happen once. Every Christmas is a new birth, a new, a new opportunity for each of us to give birth to more of the light and to commit ourselves to nurturing that light, trusting it, believing in its presence within us, sending it forth with every choice we make to bring more of itself into expression, to create more and more again of the new consciousness with which each of us is miraculously pregnant, the consciousness Jesus describes as the kingdom of heaven. The Christmas story tells us how to do it. First, be willing to let that spark of divinity within our hearts express itself as us. Second, control negative thinking. Be the master of your negative thoughts. Third, go off into the silence of the secret place of the Most High. Deep within our own consciousness, be a meditation. Dedicate everything to God by putting God first. Be single-eyed to the truth. And what this means is, no matter what the outer appearance, the Spirit of God is present in every situation. And all things will work out for good. Six, let go of that which is no longer needed in order to make room for the Christ to be born in us.
If you'd like to know more about spiritual growth and about metaphysically interpreting some of the stories in the Bible, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the meantime, may you be continually blessed and have a God-inspired week. And so it is. Amen.